In this demonstration, we're going to cover what's new in Comprise Migrations. We've added in several new capabilities in the new interface. As you can see here, just starting with data stores, we've added in more data insight capabilities telling you more about the various NAS systems that you have in your environment. And this is all great information to know before you begin a migration, not to mention all the other information that we have on the plan page with the analysis and deep analytics with uh, even more details for the environments. But just to start with, we're going to talk about some of the new features that help you have more options to move data. Let's just jump right into the migrate page real quick. And what I've done here is set up a couple of these scenarios that are now possible with these new capabilities. We've always done the traditional, you know, standard migration of identifying a source system that we're going to take data from, identifying a destination we're going to send data to, and we use an iterative process to be able to move data from one to the other. The goal in all of this is to, at the end of all this, make sure that the destination identically matches the source. Same data, same file, same attributes, same permissions and everything throughout the environment. So this is something we've been doing for several years and been super successful with, and we do really, really quickly and really, really well. But what we've added in now is the ability that maybe this destination has some data pre-staged there. Maybe it was moved over through um, like a, a data mover or maybe through a snap mirror or something. Um, data was previously put there and then for whatever reason, it wasn't able to finish at that point. But now they've come back to comprise and said, hey, can you help us finish that off and make sure it all goes for you, goes well for you. And so now we can go on to do an add migration and we can do that preload data movement. And in that case, it follows the pattern of a standard migration in that what we're going to do there is make sure the destination matches the source. So very similar to what we're doing now, it's just some data can be preloaded there. So a situation where a standard migration and preloaded data can come into play is to be able to do a scenario of a consolidation. And so a first kind of consolidation is a consolidation where we take many different shares and bring them together into one share. And by having that one share, we can isolate the new shares into a particular folder. So for example, in this consolidation, we're going to move data from sales into a flash array, but we're going to move it into a subdirectory called sales under operations. And so now we can do this consolidation and we can move this data over much like a standard migration and put the data in place and make sure that the subdirectory sales matches the source system of sales at the end of the migration itself. And the great thing about this being a standard migration and being that each share is isolated in its own directory, we can run multiples of these migrations in parallel um, from one system, from the various source systems into the singular destination that we have. So here's BizDev moving into BizDev's own folder, and here we have marketing moving into the marketing's own folder within the systems. So this is a way of bringing consolidations together with preloaded data with the ability to um, make the source and destination identical to each other. So that's a, a added capability for us. We've had it, we've just finally put it in the UI to make it easy to do and easy to work with. Now, remember I've talked about, there's also this keep last version addition that we've added. So here's where we can take preloaded data and we can make a decision about the incoming data versus the data that's there as to which to keep. So here's another type of consolidation where rather than moving data into individual directories, we can move them into one big share. Now, this is a more of a sequential process because we need to overlay the data that we're putting in. And we're going to make that decision about which data to keep whenever there's a conflict. The source has a version of a file. The destination has a version. We're going to keep the latest version of that file or that directory for the environment. So in this case, the destination side might have data that the source side doesn't have, and we won't want to delete that like we would in a standard version. So here's where we can come along and set up and do our first transfer. And our first transfer might be to an empty folder. And that's what I've kind of set up here. Is we're starting off with like a standard consolidation. We don't have to, but you know, in this case I did. We start off with a standard consolidation of moving data over to the engineering system that we're transferring the data to. And then another new capability in this user interface is the ability to set up a scheduled migration, but yet not start it yet. So here I've set up the second migration of moving the manufacturing data into that engineering folder. And then I've gone on to add the third migration of the ops directory into that engineering folder as well. 
So these run sequentially, one after the other, and then we'll come in and layer the data in, layer the information in, and we'll keep the last version. So throughout all these different types of migrations, you always have the audit logs and the error logs and everything else to record and have that information for compliance and regulatory and things too. And you have you know, our iterative mode to be able to move stuff very quickly and very fastly from one system to another. Let me show you one last area that we've added new enhancements for as well. And that is when it comes to dual shares. So here I've got a, a dual share that's called the user's directory on a NetApp system. And what you'll notice here is that we have multi-protocol support now. So what you can do with this is choose a primary protocol to use during the movement of the data. Many systems with dual shares, you know, they present it to the end users, either as NFS or SMB, but there's generally an underlying main protocol. And SMB is generally the one because it has more attributes and more uh, permissions and data and information associated with the files. So SMB is, is the typical protocol that we'd move for dual shares. We're not moving the NFS information. So we have this little warning here to say, yeah, we're focusing on the SMB, getting the data moved over that way. So this gives you a way to start to address dual shares and be able to move that data quickly and effectively for those two. Now, next is I'll come along and specify a destination. So I've set up my users directory on the destination side, and we're going to start doing those transfers. So this brings in yet another new feature that we've added is that I can adjust the interval for the iterations. By default, it's one day, and we've generally had a global setting for that. But now we have it to where you can tune this um, to a, uh, down to a minute, to an hour, or a couple of days. A minute might be good, for example, if I have a static share. I can do that first big transfer. It'll go through. Let's go ahead and get the next iteration done very quickly. We'll see that nothing changed because it's static. And then we can go ahead and do the final iteration and the cutover at that point. So this is where you can accelerate your migration process and plan. Before you would have to go and do a click start next or something like that. You know, this kind of eliminates some extra steps for you. Or maybe it's a super large share that doesn't change very much. So in that case, I may want something that's a couple of days for them between iterations. And maybe my cutover window is until the next holiday time frame, or may, maybe something a little farther down the road. So we don't need to run as many iterations um, as often as the others. So I can tune this for scheduling, scheduling the iterations that we're doing, the processing that we're doing. And again, as I mentioned earlier, there's also that ability to schedule the whole task up front, go through, do the setup, and then we can come back later and start the migration itself. So you'll see now that we've gone through, done the setup, created everything that we need, we have this new migration task right here that's not started yet, but I can come along when I'm ready, when I'm available, and choose start now, and that'll begin the migration process for us to begin the work. Now, there's one last area that we've added some enhancements in, and it's in an area where we do that final cutover. We also have the, uh, we've added an ability now to be able to move end users over during that final iteration phase, and they can start, you know, doing their work, doing their processing on the other side. This is really a great application, a great opportunity for applications that generate data. They, could, you know, they can't afford an outage window. They can be quickly moved over and pointed to the next system, start inputting their new data into them while we're doing this final cutover phase and catching up on maybe some older data and things like that too for the environment. So there's um, a couple of great case, use cases for warm cutovers and good to work with your comprised field team on getting that implemented and where's the right place to use it and the right time to use it. And we're looking to add more in those areas as well to reduce those cutover windows as much as possible and make it as seamless as possible for everybody. So that's some of the new features that we've added into the environment and we look forward to working with you.